we are. Hello, Facebook Live. I'm Reverend Brianna Lynn. I'm a student of life, a soul mentor when chosen, and the Reverend Witch at theearthtemple.com. You can check us out there. And I've been coming on to do these Wild Woman Rhapsodies for over almost three years now. And they are a space for me to come on and to channel about specific topics. And this is a topic that I feel very passionate about. Hi, Christy, it's good to see you. Um, and this is a topic about the new dom. I don't know if you've heard that term before. It's used in some BDSM play, um, but to dom or to dominate someone is uh, a way that's played in many different frequencies. And I wanna talk a little bit about domination as a paradigm. Hi Katya, it's good to see you. And what it actually means to be a real dom. Um, this is something that has been channeled from my heart and from my body, so in no means is this meant to tell you the ultimate truth or tell you how you should be living or that you should be doing something different. This is truly just medicine from me to me and it dissipates out. And if it's supportive for you, fantastic. If not, no big deal. Um, I just wanna call in spirit for a moment to be in this conversation so that it can be received by your hearts and that it comes from my heart because I've been really unpacking the conversation around oppression and what does it mean to actually stand for anti-oppression. And as someone who studies language, I study neuro-linguistic programming and linguistics, which are two different things. Um, we, I really enjoy looking at language and I've been really questioning what is our language of hegemony? What are language it, that we use that already um, reinforce the systems of power at play. And in that language, I've been looking a lot at the words around oppression and domination. And as a woman, as a human who wants to be a leader and loves to create life, I've, I've de dealt with and really battled this energy of domination within myself. Because as a leader, as someone who's outspoken, who someone get, gets on here, um, my fire can come out and it can be perceived as domination. And maybe it even has been, right? Maybe I've been, you know, putting myself on top of other people, right? The definition of domination that I refer to here is the need to force my personal financial power goals and needs upon others, right? So domination is when I enforce what I need on others versus dominion, which is what I'm working with, which is what I'm breathing into, right? Which is the creative responsibility that is activated by a collective vision. I love that distinction, right? Domination is what the United States government is based on. It's what the United States educational system is based on, what most Western educational systems are based on. If we're coming from the European monarchy of domination, which came from the Catholic Church orders of domination, which came from all of that time, deep, deep domination. Any systems that came out of the domination paradigm are not gonna support dominion. Dominion is when we as individuals collectively stand together and say our collective vision is what gives us creative responsibility to show up. And domination is tempting because it can, it has this ability to shut down and I've had to navigate it within my own life. I've had to navigate it within my own relationships, right? Like where in my relationships am I showing up as dominant? Where in my relationships were where do I need to assert that I have needs and I have goals and that has to be the thing that drives this? The, the softening that is happening, I'll just speak for myself, in my personal system, in order for me to step into true dominion is about the collective vision becoming center point above my own needs and goals and seeing how my own personal needs and goals can feed into the collective vision. The domination paradigm has taught us how to silence ourselves. The domination paradigm has taught us how to silence others. And if we wanna talk about anti-oppression, we, we have to talk about the domination paradigm within ourselves. What parts of myself am I still silencing? What parts of myself am I still saying are not good enough? What parts of myself am I still shutting down? What parts of myself are still afraid? Right, either because of fantastical things or real life things, I'm gonna tell you a story about something really happening. The HOA, where we currently live, um, is suing the owner of the house that we live in. We are leasing this home. And the reason why he says that he's suing is because we're running a commercial business. We're not running a commercial business. But when we first met, 
his name's Michael. I call him Archangel Michael. When Archangel Michael, who's the president of the HOA, and I first met, I could feel in that moment he had an attraction to me. Whatever it was, whether it was physical or emotional, I don't need to categorize it, but there was a draw forward. And right in that draw forward, and we were connecting, he then shut down. He then had to go. He had to shut down, shut down. And since that day, over a year ago, he has been coming after my partner and I in various different ways, trying to get us to shut down what we do. And I have dominion. I have a collective vision. My creative responsibility comes from my collective vision of bringing peace to this planet, to bringing heaven to earth, to ending all wars with myself, with other selves in the world itself. So I've called him many times. I've had as many conversations as he would allow me. I've tried to listen to him, but every time he asserts the needs that he has, the goals that he has, and the vision that the HOA has on top of us. It's not a collective vision, it's domination. When someone is asserting their needs or their vision on top of you and saying you have to behave this way because I have these needs, that is domination. I see a lot of domination language even in the conversation around anti-oppression and making people wrong for their experience. No matter what side you are in the oppression scale, whether you're the deep oppressor or the deeply oppressed, speaking about changing our paradigm gets to come from a place of dominion and not domination. Because if the way we speak about it is domination, we're only creating more domination. And this is something I've had to learn in my life. If you've been watching me on Wild Woman Rhapsodies, this is number 78. Y'all know, or 77, I don't know whenever it is, it's in the high 70s. If you're listening to me from Real Life Magic, the podcast, if you've heard my we don't know shit from Instagram, whatever it is, you've heard my fire come out and I will be the first one to admit that I have to deal with the dominant dominator within myself, the general. I have a general that lives inside of me that has been programmed here to keep me silent and to keep others following the rules. I love following the rules. I have this secret desire to be liked by all the authority and get it all right and to get all the gold stars. So my movement from domination of needing to assert my need, needing to assert my desires, needing to assert my vision on others into dominion, which is what it actually means to be a true community player. I don't even want to say king and queen anymore because it's more hierarchy. I'm so done with the inverted fucking roles. It's not supposed to be like this. It's supposed to be like this. We're a circle where we can all support each other. <sighs> So that conditioning by the domination paradigm to silence myself or to become the dominant one that in my life as a woman, as a human being, I've been taught that I'm either the dominant one or the submissive, that there's not another place, that you're either fucking or getting fucked. And I'm so done with that binary. It's just not true. There's another place that I want to introduce here. It's called the new dom. It's called dominion. And it's what we have over our domain. And it is the creative responsibility to act from a place of collective vision. That's dominion. And it has a different frequency. And I'm learning that rose flame frequency as it lives inside of me. In the domination paradigm, feelings are the antithesis of progress. <laughs> In the domination paradigm, feelings, what you feel, your emotional experience is the antithesis of progress. So in the domination paradigm, you're going to hear a lot of things like your feelings don't matter. Just hustle anyway. Just shut it down and get it done. Hustling is part of the domination paradigm. Even if you're a coach, even if you're a spiritual person, even if you're someone who's done all the work, if there's still that hustle, if there's still that need to prove ourself, prove our worth, that's the domination paradigm. Feeling our feelings fully, giving ourselves enough time and breath and space to feel our feelings fully is the opposite of domination paradigm, is the way we move from domination into dominion, is to feel all of our felt experience and to learn how to move with them. I teach this a lot, BS mountain, breath, sound, movement, touch. When we're feeling a feeling, can we get in touch with it? Welcome it into this space, breathe with it, make sound, move the body and touch the body to move the emotion. Being with the emotion, being with the feelings and allowing it to move our, through our body rather than telling it to shut down, rather, telling it, rather than telling it to go away. When we dominate ourselves, it justifies us dominating others. When we dominate our own emotional body, that justifies us dominating others. And the emotional body is what we have called the feminine. And so the mistreatment of women, the mistreatment of our planet starts with the domination of self over the emotional body. 
When the domination of self over the emotional body, when individuals are allowed and able to and taught how to dom their own feminine and shut it down, it's easier to dom women, it's easier to dom Mother Earth, it's easier to dom other felt experiences in this human life. But the first place where we learn how to dominate is within ourselves and within our own feeling bodies. I see this a lot with my brothers. Hi, Don. it's good to see you as I'm about to talk about the brothers. I've talked about this a lot with my male partner and uh, the male identified ones in my life, how as young boys, men are taught how to dominate their feelings, how to stop crying, how to stop feeling, how to stop having an emotional experience. And that feelings are the key to get into the dominion realm. To start to move out of anti-oppression, we first have to give ourselves full permission to feel all of our feelings and learn how to digest them. How does this relate to Black Lives Matter and anti-oppression? <sighs> Black Lives Matter. And I'm a big stand that we get to address all levels of oppression that have been created by the domination culture that we currently live in. And the importance of addressing our feelings within these contexts are multifold. But first of all, we as Anamkara, as soul siblings, as one human family, get to recognize that what we do is secondary to how we do it. So if we're going to talk about anti-oppression, if we're going to create spaces where we want to talk about another possibility, my invitation, my seed planting is, can we do it in a non-dominant way? Can we do it without domination built in? And I'm not saying that anyone's doing it wrong. I'm not saying that it should be done differently. I just know based on my studies of history, it's not what we do, it's how we do it. But it's not only what we do, it's how we do it. So if the frequency is domination in any of our anti-oppression conversations where we have to dominate the other person, we have to make them wrong, we have to show them that they're wrong, we're actually perpetuating oppression. So even if what we're saying is correct, even if what we're saying is right, even if what we're saying is true, when it comes off as someone needing to dominate someone else, and I'll be the first one to look at myself at this because I've done this before. When I need to dominate someone else, I'm playing into that domination model. I'm the oppressor, right? And we've talked about the ego triangle before between the victim, the perpetrator, and the rescuer. When the victim feels so victimized that they need to beat that drum and let you know how victimized they are, they easily slip into perpetrator. The victim becomes the perpetrator when they feel like their voice needs to be heard over others. And that's a really challenging space to be. So how do we create spaces within the Black Lives Movement and in the anti-oppression movement to allow people who've been on the oppressed side of the, ex of the spectrum of oppressor and oppressed, allow those who've been on the side of the oppressed to come forward and speak their peace? P-I-E-C-E, -E, um, and, and allow space for rage and allow space for anger. I'm not sure what the answer is to that question, to be completely honest, but I do know that there is a space for expression of rage and anger for those who've been oppressed. And I also know that then there's a deeper conversation around how we want to move forward as a society. How do we activate dominion within individuals and then as a collective, right? Domination is a triangle. One is at the top and then it disseminates down to the masses. Dominion is circles that can interlock and create the flower of life. So we can all be leaders, we can all step forward, we can all live our dreams, we can all have the beautiful lives that we desire within dominion. If we're still looking at domination paradigms, that means that only a few win. That means only a few win at the expense of others, only a few win at the cost of slavery of others. So when we're looking at what anti-oppression actually is, we get to look at language and structures as much as we do movements and the symptoms. Black Lives Matter is in response to the symptoms of the oppression that we experience in this country. Sarah says, I feel some, most people are afraid. There's the mentality of consume or be consumed, dominate or be dominated. Yeah, that's, that's a mantra that we've said in Western culture, right? In this colonizer culture, it's either dominate or be dominated. I mean, I think about those little boys, let's say, in the mid 1700s, right, before the American Revolution, who were moving from England to the United States because the monarchy was persecuting them, right? And these little boys are told by their father, you know, we've got to run, we've got to be strong, we've got to make it across the Atlantic to make it to the, the, this wonderful land of freedom. They get to this wonderful land of freedom and it's not wonderful and it's not free. And they have to fight every inch of the way to get anything. And then they're told, okay, you can take this land from these people who are less than you. We call them natives, but they're, they're just underneath animals, 
right? And I think about that little boy who was running away from the king, who's now told that these natives are animals and that he can kill them in order to finally have his freedom. And he was the one who was told to dominate or be dominated. And I think about that little boy, three, four, five years old, who's getting that imprint in his system. And I see that in the Trumps of the world. I see that in these, these leaders who their little boy has been told that they either need to dominate or be dominated. It's like you either have to rape or be, be raped. That's, there's way more options than that family. There's way more options. I get that it comes from fear. I get that it comes from the past 8,000 years that we as humanity have been at war with each other. For the past 8,000 years, of all tribes, all peoples, everyone's been the dominator and the oppressed. Everyone's been the dominator and the oppressed on every side. And to come to a place where we wanna talk about a different structure around dominion rather than domination, we want to challenge the monarchy, we wanna challenge the idea that kings and queens rule over us, that's a huge step, right? Because that isn't just white culture, that isn't just European culture, that's African culture, they had royal structures. Indian culture, they have the caste system. It's Chinese culture, they have huge caste systems. The Mongolian structure, they with the largest, most violent empire ever that human has ever seen. Thousands of years, that's the Khans ruled all of Russia and China and tortured those people. The most DNA on the planet right now is from Genghis Khan because he raped so many women. So every person on the planet has been a part of a culture that has been an oppressor and the oppressed. And if we want to move out of domination paradigm, we have to move into dominion, which we get to move into dominion, which is all about radiating from in the collective responsibility for a shared vision, the creative responsibility of a shared vision or the creative responsibility for a collective vision, rather than I need to impose my needs, wants, desires upon you, that I am the leader and I'm gonna tell you what to do. I'm the leader, I'm gonna give you the answers because it's only my vision that we're going after. The CEO model is phasing out. Have you noticed? The guru model is phasing out. Have you noticed? Share this video if it moves you and if you're ready to have a deeper conversation around dominion versus domination, join me. This is gonna be a big part of the trainings that my partner and I are facilitating, Sacred Circle Facilitators Training, and our School of Shamanic Arts rests deeply on the activation of dominion within each soul because that's the way that we end the war with self. The end the war with self, claimful dominion. That I am in my domain, I am home fully in my toes, in my body, in my, in my skin. And I come from a place of deep love connected to the everlasting love of the divine one who I call Ma. And she calls me Brie. <laughs> and you can have your own personal connection with that divine force. I can't give you that connection and no one can take it away from you. So dominion is about being divinely connected to that source and radiating that creative responsibility that comes from having a collective vision more than just an overarching authority telling me what to do or me becoming the authority and telling others what to do. That's usually people's desires. Like, may one day I become the ultimate authority and then I can dominate others. Really, you wanna be the CEO? You wanna be the president? You wanna be the chief of police? You wanna be the leader of a movement and dominate others and create disgusting ickiness in your belly? There's another way. I don't know what it looks like exactly, but it is the distinction of the new dom. Are you ready to dom your life and to have dominion over what it means to be in your own power, connected to the divine and connected to that creative responsibility of a collective vision? It's the difference between power versus force. Dominion is having power in my cells, power in my breath, power in my movement. Domination is I have to force myself to get up and exercise. I have to force myself to meditate. I have to force my workers to work for me. I have to follow up. Domination, the hierarchy of top down, is all about force reinforcement and accountability, whereas dominion is all about inspiration and co-creation. So you get to choose every moment, right? Like it's not like you make a declaration and then all of a sudden your life is either in domination or in dominion. It's every moment. Am I being dominant against myself and others or am I being in dominion? And this is one for me because y'all know if you've been tuning in or you can watch any of my old videos, I got some fire and some serious domination paradigm to work with. Um, and so I'm learning how to soften for myself with myself first how to be kind with myself, how to be that rose flame within myself. And when I burn, how to burn so juicy. And it's a big shift, domination to dominion. 
I've, I have a lot of safety mechanism within my domination. I know how to dom people. I know how to shut people down. I know how to make people feel less than. I know how to, I've gained all these skills from hierarchy and the domination paradigm, formerly known as patriarchy, that I'm ready to give up. And domination doesn't mean I give up my power. Domination just means I give up my force. Dominion means I get to sit in my own power that I don't have to force on anyone else. And it's a much juicier, much more relaxed place to be. So thank you all for being here. Rachel, Tess, Eli, May, good to see you all. If you didn't get to see the whole thing, check it out from the beginning, Domination versus Dominion. I'm Reverend Brianna Lynn. I'm a student of life. I'm a sacred mentor when called upon, and I'm the Reverend Rich at theearthtemple.com. You can check us out. Thank you for being here. Thank you for tuning into Wild Woman Rhapsody number 70 something. And if you're checking us out on the podcast, please check out theearthtemple.com here on Facebook as well, earthtemple.com, and sign up for our newsletter to stay in touch. I love you all. Anjanette says, wonderful. Speak it says, thank you, Anjanette. I appreciate you very much. Um, and if you want to find out more about